Welcome to another episode of the best cheap gun I ever bought. A year ago, I posted a video about the best cheap gun I ever bought at the time. That was this for $179. I purchased this big, ugly nine millimeter handgun, the Bull Impact. I tested it for several months, worked well, shot well, accurate, 100% reliable. Actually pretty impressed with it. When I was making that video, I found out that the Bull Impact was replaced with this, the Bull Cherokee in the 90s. While the Impact was like a weird cross between a CZ75 and a 2011, the Cherokee more or less flat out CZ75 clone. I found a surplus Cherokee, this one, for $254.95, had to make the play on it. Bull Armory, relatively new to us in the US market, but they've been operating out of Israel since 1990. In that time, they've fulfilled a number of law enforcement sidearm contracts in the Middle East, meaning that periodically a crate of these pistols will just show up stateside as law enforcement surplus and sell for bottom dollar. Bull doesn't yet have the name recognition that many European manufacturers have, so there are deals to be had on the Cherokee. Yeah, I paid $75 more for the Cherokee than this $180 Impact, but which was the better deal? The Impact was cheap, but it came with no mag. I later learned that the Bull Impact uses the Bull M5 magazine, which is impossible to find. The cheapest one I could find online was 80 euro. With the Cherokee, I got a magazine, plus the gun was in better shape than the Impact was. CZ75 mags are cheap. Technically, they're about even at this price point. Now, the first generation Cherokee, the one that I bought, was introduced in 1999 to replace the Bull Impact. The Impact was solid, but bulky. It was made to be interchanged between 9, 40, and 45 ACP with just a barrel and magazine swap. But even in the late 90s, most shooters were already switching to 9 millimeters, so the Impact ended up being overbuilt with proprietary parts and hard to find magazines for no reason because no one was buying the conversions. Bull introduced the Cherokee, which sounds suspiciously similar to Jericho, and that makes sense because both are Israeli CZ-75 clones. There's a 90% chance I've already said Jericho instead of Cherokee in this video. The Cherokee, the Cherokee, Damn it. The Cherokee was going to be 9mm only, less expensive to manufacture than the Impact, smaller, compatible with CZ75 parts and mags. In essence, this is a CZ75 clone. Parts and magazines for most CZ75s will work with the Cherokee. The official line from Bull is that end users should only use parts and accessories manufactured specifically for the Cherokee. I read that as Definitely don't use anything other than Bull branded parts and certainly not any old CZ75 generic parts in this gun. F***ing lawyers ruin everything. My Gen 1 has a lanyard loop. Bull says that this was non-negotiable in the Gen 1 guns because lanyards on handguns are widely used in Israel and Europe by police and military units. In fact, mandatory for many of them. I've just been using mine as a ring for my house keys. No one even looks at me funny in the U.S. when I do that. The Cherokee ended up being a huge success, even seeing adoption with police and Israeli armed security units. The Gen 1 is extremely rare in the United States because it was never imported to the U.S. by Bull, only surplus importers in small batches, which is how I got this one for 250 bucks. In 2001, Bull finally started exporting the second generation Cherokee. The second gen had mostly cosmetic but some semi-functional changes, revisions to the exterior of the frame, addition of a Picatinny rail, better stippling, finger grooves. They also released the Cherokee G model along with the full size and compact versions that carried over from Gen 1. Brief note on that, there are no frame differences between the compact and the full-size Cherokee. They both use 17 round magazine, full-size frames. The compact just has a 3.7 inch barrel versus a four and a half inch barrel on the regular size. The G model changed this slightly because the G has a slightly fatter grip and frame. Don't know who asked for something like that. Apparently, it's a thing. That's the only difference between the G model and the standard model. Although there were only two years between Gen 1 from 1999 and Gen 2 in 2001, 
The third gen wasn't released until 17 years later in 2018. Again, differences primarily cosmetic, including a more aggressive texture on the frame, Novak-style low-profile sights, a dovetailed front sight. Vol later added forward slide serrations to the Gen 3 Cherokee, but they don't refer to this as a generation change because it was literally just the addition of slide serrations on the Gen 3 Cherokee and no other changes. Now we're going to compare the OG Cherokee right here to the newest generation because there are some substantial external differences between the two, although fundamentally they're basically the same gun, a CZ75 derivative. You can see here full dust cover on the new one with the Picatinny rail, and you've got just a traditional dust cover with no accessory rail here on the original. You've got full, very impressive actually, forward slide serrations on the slide with the newest generation Cherokee. This one, no slide serrations. Also replaceable front sight for the newest Cherokee, not replaceable. The front sight's milled in. Fortunately, it's decent with an orange dot, but you're stuck with that sight. They've got a flat face here for the trigger guard versus the rounded face for the trigger guard. The biggest both aesthetic and performance difference here, the grip. Now you can see, I love the throwback Cherokee grip. I think it looks cool as shit. It's like 80s, 90s throwback vibe, and it's very slim. Now. It's not as ergonomic as this newer one. You can see that it has finger grooves, very aggressive checkering, and thumb shelves on both sides. That's nice, right? Like it feels very good in the hand, but it is fatter. So honestly, if you were going to conceal carry one of these, because both are the compact version, same barrel length and everything, I kind of like the original one just because it's got, it's slicker, it's probably, it could be a little bit lighter, but it's definitely thinner, that's for sure. Moving further back, you can see the sights are similar, but they mount differently, so I bet you the sights aren't interchangeable between the two. Controls, levers, pretty much look identical. Trigger, hammer, everything else. Now one neat little throwback feature too from the Cherokee, lanyard loop. You can always just remove it, but I think it's kind of neat. The lanyard loop here on the newer version is in the back, kind of like what you see with Glock and a lot of the more modern firearms so you don't have that pin, but I think it kind of looks neat. So I requested a TNE copy of the latest Gen 3 Cherokee to try out against my Gen 1 to see if there were any actual performance differences. The only way, of course, to test this out was to get them both out to the range and we shot a magazine through each of them at 10 yards. Ryan and I each shot both guns and gave our observations. So that's the first generation. Again, pretty good, kind of rapid fire. Um, you know, I'm happy with that. And then here's the newest generation. There's the one I effing through again, as I do. And then all the rest of them, you know, just in a couple of inches. So, I mean, they're both good shooting guns. I think the edge, we'll let Ryan try it next and see what he says. I think the edge goes to the newer generation which I'm pretty, I'm disappointed about because I really like the old school one. But look at the, the difference we're talking about here, right? I mean, ultimately, if we scored these, it, it, it's really not gonna be that much different. Okay, Ryan, why do you hate the old school Cherokee? Uh, What's mainly wrong with it? Just this uh, lanyard loop. We'll take it off and uh, I think I'll, I'll be fine with it. What? It just really digs in your let's, hand. Let's see your target here. So the two right hand targets, which one was your, was which one was the old school? Old I already school. know the answer. And new school. Which one did you shoot better? Uh, Pretty close. I just shot this a little low, but I probably had a better group here with uh, the old school. Can you admit that the old school is better? Uh, old school is, is uh, <laughs> definitely still fresh. Um, as long as this pin's not digging into my palm. Now we both shot them about the same. Ryan shot the Gen 1 slightly better. I shot the Gen 3 slightly better. This is ironic because I like the Gen 1 better. I like the finger grooveless grip here. I like the synthwave aesthetic. 
It's got a nicely broken in four and a half pound single action trigger. Ryan liked the Gen 3 better with its finger grooves, a little bit more advanced modern look, but it has a six pound heavier trigger. But then he shot the Gen 1 better. So the bottom line is unnoticeable performance differences between Gen 1 and Gen 3, but you may as well, I guess, just get the Gen 3 with all of its more modern features, finish, forward slide serrations, aggressive grip texturing, so on and so forth. Dollar for dollar, the Cherokees ran well. It was like, pow, wow. Come on guys, I had to get a culturally insensitive and terrible Native American joke in there somewhere, you know it. Look, even the compact version of these guns wouldn't be that great to carry because they're thicker than a Glock 17 with the same size grip, but at least they're cheap, they're fun to shoot, they're reliable, they have good capacity. If you're on a budget, why not? These are good pistols based on a proven design used by law enforcement. Bull Armory has shown the U.S. that they're a pretty capable manufacturer, mainly of very high-end 2011, 1911-style pistols. The Cherokee shoots well. It's funny to me that this cheapo Bull Impact kind of catfished me into liking polymer frame CZ-75s, which I previously hated. Now, the f***ed up twist in this whole thing is you can find Gen 2 Cherokee's new in the box right now for under $250. So I technically paid $5 more for a well-worn, but much cooler Gen 1. The new Gen 3's are just about three Benjamins and a Jackson, so they're pretty cheap too. Over the 23 years of the Cherokee, this has allegedly been a popular seller for Bull, which is extremely unusual, but they say they nail government contracts with this thing. Israeli and European law enforcement agencies, they prefer DASA hammer-fired guns over striker-fired guns, and the CZ-75 is already popular and familiar in those countries, so the Cherokee just works for them. As a side note, according to my conversations with the guys at Bull, the term Israeli carry, that is carrying without a round in the chamber, is for the most part absolutely true. Because of compulsory military service at the age of 18, there are a lot of new recruits walking around out there carrying handguns, and they have no handgun experience. So Israelis just train their Cherokees to have an empty peace pipe, if you know what I'm saying, to avoid an accidental shook pop, you know, when you're at the market. Bull's well known for their high-end 1911 and 2011 style pistols. It was weird for me to find out that they made inexpensive clones of the old CZ-75 workhorse a bit like finding out that Mercedes started making a Camry, but then was selling it for less than Toyota did. Kind of weird. I still dig it. And I dig you guys. Thank you as usual for watching. I really appreciate your support of TFB TV. If you like us, think about supporting us at Patreon, Subscribestar, Utreon. We do giveaways for our Utreon and Subscribestar supporters. We are primarily viewer supported. Bull did not pay me to make this video. This is a T&E copy that I have of the Gen 3 Cherokee. And I bought this with my own money because of support from viewers like you. So guys, please think about throwing us a buck or two a month if you don't mind. Thank you again for watching. Take care.